Hey, what's up, YouTube? I'm Dewan. For all of you that have been following me, you know I like to do interviews with IT professionals, especially the ones that you know I have some great relationships with. And today I have someone that has helped nurture me to where I am today, and I just am honored that he has taken out time out of his day to come have some barbecue and you know do an interview. So with no further ado, I have IT director extraordinaire Norm Botwinick. Well, thank you, Duan. How you doing, Norm? I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so Norm, thank you for coming on. My pleasure. I'm glad to be here. Glad to help. Yes, sir. So um, to kind of get right into it, I like to start interviews off with one question. You know. Basically, how did you start from the bottom? How did you get into IT? Well, uh, my getting into IT story was uh, pretty easy, actually. Uh, when I was in school, they had a couple of computer-related classes, and I went ahead and signed up for them when I took them when I was in high school. Okay. And from there, I went took a few classes at college and dabbled a little bit with computers, and I enjoyed it. And the next thing you know, I went to a, a four-year degree Got my education and graduated as a programmer. Programmer? Yes, sir. Which language? Let me guess. COBOL. The COBOL was one. Yep. <laughs> this was back in the 90s. So it was COBOL, it was Assembler, it was JCL, oh. and uh, Turbo C. Turbo C. Turbo C, correct. Oh. So after about, uh, I want to say, six weeks of trying to program, I decided that I <laughs> wanted to move over to the infrastructure side. And I never programmed again. <laughs> wow. Infrastructure science. So during that time, which operating system was around? Well, I started with Windows 95, okay. which was an upgrade from DOS. So That's uh, like the first GUI, right? The Windows 95? Well, technically, there was a Windows for work groups, a Windows 3.11. Uh -huh. That was really kind of a GUI, but honestly... Uh, by today's standards, what we're using today, Windows 95 is really the first one. I see, I see. Uh, then you went to Windows 95, then you went to uh, Windows 98, and then it progressed. Right. Okay, okay. So, starting from there, going to college, getting your first programming job, and then going over to infrastructure, what was your money move to get you, that you believe that was your big break? My big break started uh, due to the dot-com. I was fortunate enough to graduate in the early 90s from college, and during that time frame, there were all kinds of startup companies going on. So I was able to get in with a company, uh, learn some skills, uh, within 18 months to 24 months, make my move from that company to another company, and that was my money move. I was fortunate enough to be able to have two or three good money moves in a row uh, in the early 90s. So the early 90s, great, great money moves, were you a part of Y2K? Yeah, yes I was. I was a part of Y2K. In 2000, I worked for a uh, local city. Okay. And while I was working there, uh, Y2K was a huge deal. So right around uh, 1999, January, we started planning <laughs> for 2000 because we weren't sure what we were going to do. Hmm. Uh, we had a lot of development that was in-house. Uh, we had a lot of infrastructure that was old, so we had no idea what was going to happen from a development or from an inf infrastructure standpoint. So we started testing everything we could test. So did your IT department load up on water? Yes, we did, <laughs> as a matter of fact. We had cases of water. Um, I had cases of water at home and bags of chips. So I, I was fully stocked. That's cool. Did anything happen? Exciting? Absolutely nothing happened. <laughs> we, but the thing is, is that we didn't know. Right. And we were better off making you know, the preparations that we did. Right. And by doing so, we were able to take a look at our existing infrastructure in detail. We were able to take a look at our existing code base in detail. And we were to, we made improvements. So it was a good exercise to go through, although it would have been nice if it wasn't quite so accelerated. I know what you mean. So during that time, were you a manager? At that particular time, I was not a manager. Okay. At that time, I was the email guy. I made email work. I see. So at what point did you transition from, you know, the boots on the ground to being a manager? Well, I started as the help desk guy, and then I moved into essentially more of a uh, administration role, being network and email and things like that. And then from there, I went to a team lead role. And wow, okay. from a team lead, I went to uh, a manager, and then I went from a manager to a senior manager, and then from there, I went to a director. 
I see. Yeah, a pretty good director too. Well, thank you, sir. I have to say. <laughs> thank, you, thank you very much. <laughs> so, Norm, seeing how you've been in IT um, a very long time. <laughs> no, you know, I'm just joking. But no, seeing how you have seen many transitions within IT, where do you see it within five years? When I first started with IT, Duan, everything was really more of a server-based environment, and we had dumb terminals that just performed a specific function. Hmm. Um, and then slowly but surely, servers came online. People started having three or four servers in an office. And then today, we have everybody has their own PC, everybody has their own uh, laptop, and then we have servers everywhere. But I believe that you know the big push is going to the cloud, and when you start looking at cloud services, a lot of web-based services, it's really more of a full circle. We're going back to the, to I don't want to say the old school way of doing things, Mainframe. but yeah, we're going, we're really going back to you have a, a hosted application and you have some sort of client or thin clients that is on, you know, on the front end that we as end users are going to use, which is similar to the, what it was really 25, 35 years ago. That's, that's really interesting. So you being a manager, I know you would know kind of firsthand, is it really the cost savings that everyone speaks about? Well, that's a tough question because that's a really, that's really situational. So you okay. have to take a look at everything you've got going on. Um, the one thing that people don't take into account when they start looking at some sort of hosted or web-based type solution like that when you go back to the client server is that if you're hosting something in the cloud or you're paying for that service, you're paying for it every single month or every single year for the rest of its life. Exactly. Whereas today, if you purchase a software package off the shelf, put it on a laptop or PC, you pay for it once and you use it until it dies. I know, and it seems that everything is going to that, that uh, managed service type platform. <clears throat> you know, even apps that you put on your phone or laptop wants you to do mm -hmm. a monthly, monthly subscription. Everything, uh, everything is subscription based. If you start looking at some of the applications out there for even design work, they're going to a subscription based, which would be either yearly or monthly paid subscriptions. And I believe that's the business model for most of the, the larger software companies now. Yeah, that's, I guess it's good for them, but at the same time for me that I'm used to owning an application. True, true. But I want you to take a look at this from the perspective of a large company. Right. If I put this on a CD, you're going to install it, you're going to give it to potentially four or five of your friends, and then now we've got one copy, and then we've got five additional or six additional copies that that company is no longer making revenue on. True. Now, if I put it online as a hosted services, if you're using my application, I have a perpetual revenue stream. True. So it's not going to be just you and all of the people that would normally have that CD. It's you and them, and it's every single month for the rest of right. your usage of this application. So from a big business perspective, uh, you know, it makes sense. I mean, this is a, a money maker for, for large organizations that develop applications. And I can see that. these. So you have these large organizations that are now making money. Now let's talk job-wise mm -hmm. with that. So if... Infrastructures uh, on the small, medium size are going to the cloud. Even large size businesses are now going to the cloud, offloading applications. What happens to um, the manning for your IT departments? Well, we, when we start talking about the cloud, we need to make sure we're talking about an external cloud, which is what I think you're referring to, right. but you also have an internal cloud as well. Private cloud. So you can internalize that within your own corporation or your own company. You can set up your own cloud. Uh, that way if somebody needs server or needs space, it can be click, click, click. It's provisioned and it's available for use. Right. So, um, and you're talking about specifically external clouds. Right. <clears throat> well, what that will do is reduce your uh, dependency upon IT and IT professionals locally because now that's going to be hosted uh, remotely uh, and it's going to be maintained remotely. It's going to be backed up remotely and chances are they probably have some sort of help desk or some sort of wiki of some sort to help you with support on that. So depending on the situation, it may be a cost savings. As far as how many employees you have on staff? From an IT perspective, yes. Right, right. Hmm. So is that a good thing? Would that create new jobs on the cloud side, you think? Yes. Oh, okay. yes. Oh, yes. Okay. I believe that cloud is probably one of the biggest moving industries right now from an IT perspective. A lot of stuff is moving to the cloud. There's a lot of cloud services uh, that are being offered. Uh, you know, there are um, 
Microsoft has got the Office 365 that's available today, cloud service. Take a look at Google's offerings. Uh, they do a lot of cloud services and hosted services. Hmm. This kind of sets us up for a nice transition. <clears throat> with you graduating from college and with you also seeing a lot of resumes on your desk, what would you suggest someone that is looking to get in IT, certifications or college? Um, that's a tough one because uh, they both have their advantages and they both have their disadvantages. Um, from a break into an IT perspective, if you want to say, let's say, Duan, you want to go from the job you have today, uh, which is not IT related, to an IT related job, right. uh, the first thing I would do is really make sure that this is something that you want to do. So before you make that jump, I would start talking to some college recruiters and they have some tests and things like that, that they can do to find out what you really are interested in. From an IT perspective, you could be a good developer and you don't even know it. You may be great at infrastructure, you don't even know it. So you really need to, to find out what your, your niche is going to be. Then you're going to start looking at, do I fast track it with certifications or do I go to a college? And then from my college, uh, do my two years, three years, four years, and then go from there out into the job force. The advantage to looking at uh, some of the local colleges is that they're going to have recruiters that are working with those colleges from outside companies that are coming in for career, career day and things like that. So you're going to have some opportunities from the college to become gainfully employed. Right. When you start looking at your certification or your boot camp type situations like that, you're probably not going to get as much offering from a job perspective, but you will be out in considerably less time and it may be considerably less money. Hmm. Okay. So okay. it depends, I guess, where you're at in, in your career today and how quick you want to make that jump. Um, if I was to do it over again at the age that I am today, I would definitely go to the boot camp. I would get the certifications that I need, and then I would start pounding the pavements or looking for that job. Hmm. Is there a particular area you would recommend someone to focus on? I know you mentioned them to find what they like best, but <clears throat> it seems a common goal for most people in, that want to get in IT is six figures. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it seems everybody, I mean, that's a nice, that's a nice, uh, you know, pay grade, but at the same time, what area really is going to pay that? All areas from an IT perspective that I've ran across, be it infrastructure or development, will pay into the six-figure range. Right. The question is, is how do you get there? Um, you're going to get there from a whole lot of work and from a whole lot of dedication and from either some sort of certification program or some sort of college education. Then once you have your your papers, so to speak, you get your job and then you do your time and then you slowly build. It doesn't happen overnight. You start at the bottom and you work your way up. Yeah, that's kind of hard when you're transitioning. I, I think it's easier when you actually start from the bottom rather than transition, let's say from a job that's you're making 60000 and you want, you want to get in IT, depending on your area, but if you're making 60000 now, you may have to take a pay cut to forty or 50000 just to get your foot in the door. That's right. Uh, that's And that's kind of a problem for some people, Duan, because uh, you, you make the money you make today and nobody can really afford to take less. Right. So once you invest all that money in yourself and now you're going to make less money, you have to determine if that's really worth it. Uh, in my case, um, you know, of course, I'd say, let's, let's do it. Let's go for it. <laughs> take, take a small cut, knowing that in the long term, you're going to pay off. So you've made an investment in yourself, right? and you're making a little less money today than you were six months ago, but through hard work and being in the right place at the right time, six months from now, you may be back where you were a year, a year and a half from now, you may be making a few dollars more, and then slowly but surely, you will be on the right path, the, making that six figures that you keep talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree with that, but I do have a question. By the way. So... For someone that's in their 20s or 30s, mm -hmm. great advice. What about someone that's 40 or 50? If somebody's really in their 40s and 50s and they want to transition into IT, my recommendation would be to...